All right. Well, here we have the Uniden Pro 505XL. This is the current version, the Bearcat, as it's called. Uh, this is an AM only radio. Again, a low wattage, uh, four watt maximum as per FCC. And uh, but it does have some nice uh, adjustments on the inside that we'll get to here in just a minute. I uh, just wanted to point out that what we've done here is we've mated this with the RM Italy KL203-P, uh, which is a, about a, about a 100 watt little heater. And uh, you know, I got some markings on here because you can also do sideband with this uh, little amplifier. And I've got it marked here so I remember that the radio is only an AM radio. So I need to be in the down position there. And then uh, this is actually in the middle here. That's your power on and off, not high or low, just on and off. And so I remind myself that that's how you turn it on. And then on the uh, far left-hand side there, this would be um, what you, your preamp. Uh, green is preamp, red is what they call line or or not preamplified. And, you know, I got to tell you, some of these preamplifiers, all they really seem to do for me is uh, just make the static a little bit louder. You know, you, you get you got to you got to hit and miss. It's, it's totally dependent on the situation. Well, um, there's a couple of things about this radio that I love and a couple of things that I do not like at all. And uh, we'll start with the bad news. The bad news is, is you have to press these up and down buttons to change channel. I like a knob. I, I like I like to be able to uh, quickly get from you know nine to nineteen or or thirty eight all the way down to eleven in you know in a heartbeat. Here you're gonna have to press 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 press, or you can press and hold and it'll count its way down. It is a liquid crystal display, not a uh, not a light emitting diode, but LCD. So um, that works pretty good. Doesn't get real bright in the cab for nighttime driving. You got your standard on off volume you got your standard squelch right there and of course your cb and your pa but the cool thing is is it's so small and this amplifier also is so small that i just have them bolted together and i'll show you how i did that um and it just uh it just makes for a nice neat little package put that on the dashboard of the car if you need to or the truck or whatever it is you need doesn't take up a lot of space and uh, you know in town and whatnot or uh, within a few miles uh, between your convoy, uh, this is uh, totally accurate. You're not, you're not going to be shooting too much skip with that. You might, depending on the situation, but that's the way it is. You see, I got the little microphone clip on there just to make it a, a nice, tight little package. Uh, the speaker is on the bottom. Uh, you know, as usual, it's just a junky little, what are the two inch speakers? They're not very, they, there's like, I, I can't say that it's a high fidelity speaker because it isn't. So um, the only other thing I would do. To upgrade this is uh, plug in some sort of an external speaker, get yourself some kind of uh, high fidelity out of there, some some more rich tones. But um, I built this specifically so I could throw it into my backpack at any 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 call reason or, or sudden emergency and then just quick hook it up to 12 volts with an antenna. And no matter where I was, no matter whose vehicle I was in. Um, I would be able to go ahead and start transmitting and or just receiving. So uh, what you got to do is you have to, I'm going to go ahead and turn that around for you. You have to uh, yeah, get, a, get a short piece of coax or make your own. I just took a regular three-footer, cut it short, um, and uh, put it together with these Amphenol connectors. And then, um, you know, that goes from our radio, which I painted on the radio itself because it says so on the back of the amp, but you're not getting to the back of the amp anymore, are you? So R for radio, radio out, goes into the radio. So uh, a transmission comes out of the radio, runs into the amplifier, and then you plug your antenna here, marked A for antenna. And then this is the uh, cable, uh, just simple stuff right there that goes to... Uh, that one goes to the amplifier, and then the standard uh, fused uh, line for the unit in radio that comes straight out of the box. You got some feet there. You got three, four feet, um, and then you have those ends there. So the end result, obviously, is to mate these power wires together and hook them up to a cigarette lighter because this isn't going to draw a lot of amperage. So uh, it will be safe to plug into your cigarette lighter. Uh, so that's what the end result is going to be. And um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and open this thing up, and I'll show you what I did. All right, so this is the inside of the Uniden Pro 505XL. And uh, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there were things that I did like and things that I didn't like about this radio. Told you what I didn't like. Here's what I do like. 
and I apologize uh, for the clarity on this. I'm using a little Skype style USB camera on a stand. And um, I think from now on, I'm just going to continue to use my cell phone because it is uh, far superior in quality. Okay, so you're on the inside of this unit here and you're saying, hey, what can I do? What can I do? And uh, remember, folks, that anything you do inside here, you're going to avoid a warranty, uh, but it's not going to hurt anything. You're just going to tailor the radio to whatever your needs are. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is there are two areas that um, Unidin actually uh, made that popping sound and figured out folks are going to do this. So let's just make it easy so they don't destroy the radio. The first one is down here. I don't know if you can see the little red pointer. That pot is made of uh, a plastic or urethane of some kind. So you can even use a metal screwdriver. Yes, sir, Bob. And that, if you turn that clockwise, is going to increase your transmit power. And if you turn it counterclockwise, it is going to reduce your transmit power. And in our case, this bad boy out of the box made, uh, was that uh, May of 2021, this guy out of the box was right at four watts. Oh my goodness, is that right? Yes, it was. But we don't want to run four watts into these little MOSFET style amplifiers or any amplifier for that matter. Uh, you know, two is, is probably about most you want to do. Um, I think I have this one at three because I'm a jerk. Um, but anyway, I've, I've, I've powered it back down from whatever um, the initial setting was, which was four, four and a half watts. So that right there, it's towards the back of the radio. Uh, at the bottom in our case here, that is your transmit power adjuster. Okay. The second item, which is up here. That one right there, also made of, uh, I don't know, plastic, you know, some non-conductive material. So you can use a, a metal Phillips head screwdriver. And I know you got one of those in your toolbox. That is the uh, automatic modulation control. So what they've done here, again, just like in the old days, is they've allowed you to adjust your modulation control. Now, truth be told, it was turned down pretty low straight out of the box. So what I did was I cranked it all the way to the right, that is to say clockwise, and then I backed it off uh, probably an eighth of a turn, maybe just a hair bit more. Um, you know, if you if you open your modulation control too much, you, you might get over distorted. You might have a little splatter on the channels on either side. Certainly if you clip a resistor, uh, you more than likely are going to uh, have some bleed over on other channels. But uh, unit in was smart, and they said, you know, folks are going to fuss with this. And they've allowed us to tailor this to, uh, you know, some guys talk loud, some gals talk quiet, you know, whatever you need it to be. So what I did was I turned it all the way up by turning it clockwise, and then I backed it off about an eighth of a turn or so uh, just to ensure um, that I didn't have a whole bunch of uh, distortion. There are a couple of other potentiometers on this board that are ever so slightly tiny. There's one right here. It's micro. You will want to use some plastic to turn that because it is conductive. Uh, that is your S meter. So what that does is that changes how many lights or how many bars you see upon receive. I would leave it alone. But uh, if you, you know, if you, for whatever reason, want your buddy to look like he's real loud, turn it to the right. If you want to show your buddy he's a mud duck, turn it all the way to the left. So anyway, it's calibrated. Um, so I would probably leave that uh, exactly as it does. All it does is affects the meter in the front. It doesn't do anything, in fact, uh, for true output uh, SW, or I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, signal. The next one is over here. It's uh, RT number two. Um, that adjusts your squelch. Again, it's a, a micro potentiometer. I would leave that alone. Um, they've uh, factory calibrated what kind of noise your, your squelch will, will get rid of and, and what won't. Um, if for some, some reason you just want to play with that, hey, go ahead. It's your radio, man. And then um, somewhere else on here, can't find it right now, there is one more, and I think it is your, your transmit lights. It's here. It's small. It's tiny. Uh, oh. Is that it? That eh, I'm not positive that's it. That might be it. 
Don't quote me on that. There's another tiny one in there. And uh, what it does is when you key up, oh, here it is. When you key up TX meter, you see it here, TX meter. When you key up, if you want all the lights to be shiny bright uh, or all the bars to be full, I mean, regardless of how much power you're transmitting, you could adjust that there. Uh, rule of thumb basically is when you've got the power and the AMC set to where you want it and um, you're on, you know, full loud with your voice, uh, that should just barely trickle at the highest mark. And that's letting you know that you're getting full modulation. Okay. But the big takeaways here are power and modulation control. Those are the two that you want to adjust. And for running any kind of an amplifier, you want to turn the power down. So hook it up with a dummy load or to your antenna, whatever you want to do. And uh, note what kind of power transmission you have on a dead key without speaking, mind you, um, and then adjust that accordingly. Two watts is probably the most you want to drive. Three watts, you could be pushing it a little hard. Uh, so uh, take that with a grain of salt and, and do what you will with that. So I wanted to, again, mention the other thing that I really did not like at all. And you know what? It's a tiny, teeny little radio. What are you going to do? Uh, that's the speaker. Um, it is so flat <laughs> that I'm actually surprised any any kind of sound of clarity comes out of that at all. Um, you can remove it by squeezing this metal and this metal together. They're little spring loads. That'll pop right off in case you just want that cover not to be in your way while you're fussing around on the inside. Um, you know, it does what it, it does. And uh, who knows, there could be a future video that shows a big hole there and some other speaker uh, in its place because um, if you notice, uh, there is really quite a bit of room in this general area here. Uh, one could actually put a, a deeper speaker in there um, and, and probably get some better sound out of it. But uh, get one of those little external speakers. You'll be much happier in the long run with that. So power, modulation control. That's really all you should fuss with on the inside of this unit here. Okay, down to the final mechanics of attaching the amplifier to the actual radio. Uh, you've got to remove uh, that case, the backside case. And the way you do that, are there are four Phillips head screws, one there, one there, one down here, and then the other one is right there. So super simple to do. Just grab your Phillips head screwdriver, remove those, and then lo and behold, you will have exposed the bottom of the radio and removed uh, this piece here, which is your outer case. And so you can see um, on the outer case, these standoffs here that are built into that case, that's where those four Phillips head screws went. And that's what held this bad boy in place. One of the things that I did, um, because my particular installation was a bit tight and yours may be different, and I'll tell you why in a minute, is uh, I went ahead and I removed the two side screws that hold the front face plate in. And the reason I did that is because that relaxes this portion of the radio here against um, that back cover. Um, and the reason that was important for me and may not be for you uh, is simply that I wanted my controls on the amplifier to be um, as close as possible to the edge uh, of the radio so that uh, when the radio was all put back together, um, you know, I'd have all these buttons and these knobs and everything pretty much flush. So it's a little tight when you do that. And the reason is, is because you have these tabs right here that you can see. Um, and those tabs are a little bit tight when you've got that hanging over just a bit. So it's personal preference. You might prefer to have the amplifier uh, much further back on the case. It's quite possible that you'd rather have um, these antenna connectors to uh, run in line with the antenna connector on the back of the radio. So, you know, you can pretty much mount that anywhere you want to. Now, let me just show you real quick that you have all of this space here. So you can pretty much drill those holes anywhere along there that you want between them, this tab and this tab. The only thing you might want to do just to make sure that you don't get in the way of anything is if you take a look at the back of the radio, um, you can see that there's these board, uh, screws that, 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 you know, you probably don't want to have the, 
hardware that you've attached the amplifier to button up against uh, any of these. So anywhere in between there and there and anywhere in between there and there, you will be absolutely fine. There's plenty of clearance. And so what I did is I went ahead and uh, chose this particular location, like I said, um, so that uh, the front controls would, would all be about the same spot. So uh, use um, rounded, um, not flat, or if you do use flat, just make sure that they're flat at the bottom um, um, bolts because, uh, you know, you got to be uh, parallel with this cover and rounded so that uh, I use Allen screws here. These are pretty good. They happen to be stainless steel because uh, I'm that kind of guy. Anyway, so uh, take your amplifier, place it in the position that you want to place it, uh, get your marker out, pop in your, uh, your, your mark spots for where you're going to be doing some drilling, make a small pilot hole first, and then go with whatever the required size of your drill is to get your hardware in there, and mount them in upside down, and uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Go ahead and secure those on there, and then once you do so, just go ahead and reassemble everything, and you'll be good to go. Well, golly, man, you took that radio all the way apart. Why, yes, I did. My goodness. Let's see. Not a whole bunch of, not a whole bunch of uh, little screws on there. You know, we had uh, two of them for the uh, front face plate, the original four for the uh, speaker cover area, and then we had these four, uh, which actually held that back cover onto the chassis. So, um, Work your projects, folks, or otherwise they won't work. And uh, you can do this too. And in essence, what you've done is for, you know, $100 for the amplifier, 50 bucks for the radio or less, about 150 bucks, you created probably the same sound that uh, most fellas have spent about $300 um, on, you know, big, big, big radios. You, you won't have half the features. You won't have any of the features. You have squelch and PA. And that's about it. But um, if you don't need all that stuff and you just want to be heard in your caravan and your backpack trip or, uh, you know, along the road on the highway when you're driving, uh, it's more than enough power to get several miles out. Um, you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to be able to shoot some skip with this because skip is what skip is. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to say uh, that's the end of this video. And I encourage you to give that a shot or something very similar to it. Doesn't have to be that amplifier. It can be any. It doesn't have to be that radio. But uh, that, that's um, a quick lesson on how to create a $300 radio for about 150 bucks. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Click, click. Bye-bye.